What's up guys, Shane here for Deck 3D Printing and today we're going to unbox and possibly start building the Triangle Labs D-Force Mini Delta 3D Printer. So here it is guys, this is the Triangle Labs D-Force Mini Delta 3D Printer Kit. I was hit up by a company on Facebook and they said, hey, you know, we like your channel, we like what you're doing, would you mind checking out one of our printers, see what you think about it. I said, sure, why not? So this is my first attempt at an unboxing. We'll see how it goes. This is a kit, so I can't really do like an unboxing at first print. This is obviously gonna take some time to build out. So this is gonna be mainly, we're gonna open it up, we're gonna check out the parts that are in it. We'll maybe look at the inventory, and if we can start, maybe we'll try working on the frame. So it's not a terribly heavy box. I'd say 35, 40 pounds max. It's not terrible. Let's open it up. that there, you can see, uh, see some foam, fit that in there, and here it is, all the parts. I'm gonna crimp this down a little bit, because that's annoying me. Okay, so here we are. So we've got all kinds of parts in here. There's no book on top. So the main plates are acrylic. So here is all the different acrylic parts we have. So each of the pillars, I'll call them, that go up. This is all laser cut, quarter inch acrylic. I'm not sure what that is in millimeter size, but there's all that. Hardware, oh this is nice. So all of the little baggies here are labeled. M3, six piece, M5. This nut but washers and bolts, T-nuts. I'm sorry, all washers and just the nuts. But, but bolts here. Here's the extruder assembly. Oh, okay, so they're using a, okay, this is a E3D Titan, probably, well, it says designed by E3D. I highly doubt this is an authentic E3D Titan. So this is probably the knockoff version of it. But we'll see more once we put it together because I do have an authentic one. And we'll see how it compares to this one. So put these parts aside. Uh, shrink tubing, which multicolor, that's nice to see. Zip ties. Here is uh, a whole crap ton of cable chain, uh, the, I'm sorry, not cable chain, but the, uh, the geared chain. So I know each of the arms has quite a long length, so this is gonna be a big difference for me because I'm used to the Cartesian style, which don't have very long cape chains, I'll say. You know, the, uh, the belts is the better word. So here's all that, probably some more parts for it. Feet, uh, PVC pipe, probably the filament holder and a mount of some sort. More cables. Um, here, a whole bunch more. So again, I'm, I'm really liking how all of these are labeled. So M4 by 30, six piece of them. So it's gonna be real easy to actually go and find what you want. I was impressed also with my G-Tech printer. All of the bags were labeled one through, it was like 60, the, all the real little bags. So you had to have your inventory sheet next to you and say, okay, well, I need this. It's in bag M3, so, or in bag three or bag five. You find what that is, get as many as you need, and you're good to go. But at least this even gives you the lengths of everything to confirm what's actually in the bag. You don't need to have an inventory sheet anywhere. Again, a bunch more cables. This, these ones are actually all cut, so this probably goes somewhere. And here's another set. So there's a bunch of smaller heat shrink in here. So it looks like this is all gonna need to be soldered together. So it's a good thing I have a soldering iron. Over here, oh, we have the actual extruder. So let's take a look at this. I've never used a Delta, so this is all brand new stuff for me. So this is a Bowden setup. So here's the Bowden tube with the connector on one end and the, uh, for the heater, the connector for the heater. The thermistor is built into the cable chain. Or it's built into this ribbon cable, it looks like. Or is it not? I'm not sure, but we'll we'll dive more into that later. Uh, little fan on there. It's uh, an all metal is what it, they advertise it being. We'll have to open it up and take a look at the throat because I know the knockoff E3D all metal have PF, PTF, PF, 
PTFE tubing inside of it, sorry. Um, this is all 3D printed, the, this mount here. So this is where the arms actually come down to it and it, how it moves and each arm moves up each of the axes, well each of part of the, each of the arms on the Z axis, I'm sorry. Uh, the top also is 3D printed as well. It looks to be uh, decent prints. There's no real spacing in the, the bottom layer. Top layers are full. These are printed with a brim attached to it because I can see where they had to actually cut it off. You can, you can feel the rough part of that. So they had to print it with that on it and then cut it away. Again, this is, a, this is the E3D knockoff style. They're using the older style of the thermistor. They're not using their new cartridge style. So obviously, like I said, you can tell that this is a, a knockoff, but I do have spares of these in my stock. So if it goes bad, easy day. Okay, so if we pull up the, uh, the cable here, you can see that here's the thermistor. It actually goes to the white and the black on the ribbon cable and the red, orange, yeah, the red and brown go to the fan. So they just did that to kind of lessen the amount of cables going up and it comes to this one nice connector, which is, is pretty nice. I, I per, kind of prefer that. So this will be an interesting setup. Right, again, here we've got more cables. So this is gonna be, this is where that, where that ribbon cable plugs into. And we've got here, we've got limit switches. Uh, here's the USB cable. So it's using the A type. I'm not great with cable types, but a printer cable basically. So where the Forgetech FT5 is using a male to male, this is a, you know, B type to A type, I guess, whatever they are. But this is more preferable because you don't have to buy a special cable. So my GTEC is just like this. Uh, here's the LCD panel with the, the laser cut piece. It's laser cut and it's bent, so that's, that's interesting. Um, this is probably the standard 2004 character, whatever it is, the cheap one that every kit pretty much has in it. All right, so here we've got stepper motors. So these look to be NEMA 17s. A little bit different because the back end here is open. I've never, I mean, I've only seen my few printers and also looks like it could be a gasket on here. So, and this is a, there's no flat side to this. So again, I'm not quite sure how they're doing everything or what exactly to be assembled for. These are just my observations as I'm opening it up compared to what I've seen before. So this was made in Thailand. And down in here we have, oh, so we have, there's three more. So this is probably for the extruder. These are probably for the axis, I'm guessing. This already has the pulley wheel already mounted to it and it's on there tight and also the mounts these are these are pretty thick eighth inch steel mounts and this this is really heavy with that on there so we've got one we've got two and we've got three of those again those are all mounted on there so that's real nice uh, next we have Deforce. These are looks like to be probably corner brackets. Again, this might be wrong. I've never built a Delta, so this is all my learning experience. This is also all 3D printed. These are pretty heavy, so their infill is probably significant, if not 100%. Yeah, they sound pretty hefty. So hopefully they uh, hold up to the task. And I'm actually hoping that maybe they have the STLs somewhere for all these parts. So maybe if I wanted to reprint it, so maybe make these like blue or orange, I could reprint them on my own and then just swap them out, which kind of cool to do. All right, and here's the first bit of the aluminum extrusion. So these are, so there's, these are 10 by, and yeah, these are 20 by 20s, 2020, but I guess this would be 60 20 I guess because there's three of them together maybe but hey we've got some parts here get down to the next piece another piece of foam another piece of foam okay so now we're getting down here you can, you can kind of see a little bit we'll try and prop that up a little bit see if that helps uh, so here we have a spool 
with which is not a complete spool at all. So it says this is CPLA black, gives you the what the base plate should be and what the temperature should be for your extruder, 210 to 230, 30 to 50C on the build plate. There's not a ton on here, but there's quite a bit. I mean, much more than a normal sample would be. It would be nice if it was a full roll though, I will say that. Right here on the other side, we have the glass build plate. There's that. We have the board. So, okay, so this is an MKS base 1.5 Arduino board. That's going to be. It's going to be what drives the 3D printer. Uh, we have various. Looks like uh, washers or spacers made out of something. I'm not sure what those are made out of. Um, and then, throw this out of the way. So if we come over here, I guess. So we've got the. This is interesting. This is very interesting, actually. This uses a power brick. So instead of the power supply being inside the printer or mounted to it, it's, a, it's in a brick. Okay, so this is 100 to 240, which is great, 50, 60 hertz. Output 12 volts, 15 amps. So this is, oh, looks like it actually, oh, I guess the plug is here. There it is there, so it's like a laptop plug. Um, this will be connected straight to somewhere, probably the, the board directly, and it'll roll out and go into this. Here's the power plug for that. And they sent me a three-prong grounded standard US plug, which is nice. Oh, and here is the EU, I guess EU plug. Does it say on here? Um, well, actually, no, this is the Chinese plug, because I was in China before, and I know what that looks like. And here we have another terminal block for something. Actually, these actually all, they're already terminated, which is nice. I forget the name of this connector. Uh, basically, it's like a barrel connector that goes on and then you crimp it onto the edge. So it, you're just kind of insulating against the wire, but it's just making the wire a little more thicker. And it's made for these type of turn down terminal blocks. So that, that's kind of nice that they're already, you know, terminated for you. Got some more 3D printed parts three for each of the arms. So again, these are, these are quite hefty. Those are probably printed at pretty high infill settings. Have with those. And here we have the build plate. So here's the build plate. It's got three point areas to mount it to. And this the heater's pretty small. Not gonna lie, I mean, you can see the heater size, and that's only, yeah, if, you look, if, you look, yeah, if you look down in there, it, it, it starts right around here, so it's only about yay, but it's a very small heater. So maybe you might wanna look into upgrading that. Uh, and once, once we get this thing going, we test out its stock, I mean, that might be something worth uh, checking out. Oh, there's a gift for test. This is, I have no idea what this is. This is some type of MOSFET. No, I'm not a MOSFET, but I'm not sure what this is. I don't know, if you guys know what it is, let me know. Or it might be in the documentation somewhere. But there's thermistors, there's hookup wire in here, there's nozzles, there's something that it could go into. I don't know what this would attach to, but we'll figure it out eventually. All right, what's left in here? So. This maybe inventory sheet here. Yep, there's the packing list. So note, some screws and other parts are more than actual number. Please use actual, please use the actual use as the standard. So obviously Google Translate didn't work out so well for that sentence there, but hey, it is what it is. There's that, and then here is the last bit of pieces of the extrusion. So 20, I mean there's 2020, and then we have, I believe this is 2040, along with the 2060. And then here are the three 
uh, vertical bars. These are pretty long. I mean, these are close to 30 inches, I'd say. So it, it gets, it's pretty tall. And this is a mini kit, is what it said. Um, here's the bars. And that's it for the box. So uh, over there, that. Okay, and here are the arms for the printer. So these are what hook up on each of the vertical bars. There are two of these that hook up to the extruder. So the extruder is, if you're not familiar with Delta, which I'm not terribly, but I see a lot of people use them. This is basically suspended. There's two arms that go on each side of these and each arm goes up in a different direction, which gives you your, on your X and Y basically is on those arms, depending on which way they're going. And then there's Z. So it's, it's a very interesting setup on these Delta style printers. So it should be fun. I'm pretty excited for this. So there it is guys, there's this Triangle Labs D-Force Mini Delta 3D printer kit. This is all the parts here, I've got them all laid out. We're gonna take a look at all of this and we're gonna stop it there. So again, this is my first shot at doing one of these types of videos. Uh, I'm excited for it, to learn it, how to do it. If I could do anything differently, please let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you wanna subscribe, there's a button down below you can do that. If you wanna help me out on Patreon, you can throw me a dollar or two, I appreciate it. It'll go towards buying more things for the channel. I have affiliate links down below for Amazon and Maker Geek as well. So buy some filament, update your bookmarks and do whatever your normal shopping is. I appreciate all the help I can get with this. So until next time, happy printing.